The Anvil of Apotheosis is a kid bash's dream and it's even said by Games Workshop. Let me tell you all about it. And it's basically a system to build your own hero, your own character. You can get a set points value for a character. That is like 150 points for a weak character, 250 for medium, 350 for a powerful character. And with that points value that you use in normal army building, you get a separate pool of points that you use to buy buffs for your guy. So those pool, that pool of points, you use that, you can make him stronger, you can make him a better caster or a better uh, ranged character or a better melee character, or you can give him abilities to buff units around him. But there's also a cool debuff system where you can get a debuff and that debuff gives you more points back that you can then spend on more buffs. So a caster can become even weaker physically so that you can then make him an even more powerful caster. Or you can make a melee character more of a loner. That, you know, a character that goes off alone, like a guided missile, goes to kill something, but shouldn't be surrounded by other units of your army. It's a really cool mechanic. There's lots of cool buffs and debuffs. And for me, this was really an, an inspiration. It started thinking to me about like, what can I do for my Space Marines, for example, like who has a mechanical arm or a leg or something like that, like parts of him blown off. How can I make that a debuff that then also changes his character, changes the way he fights? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to have a Marine with his leg and his arm replaced with bionics or even just robotic arms and still have him fight the exact same way. It should change the character, it should impact him, it should make him feel different as well. Another cool part of this Anvil of Apotheosis is that you can buy mounts. And that really, really, really inspired me for my 40K kit bashes, because I feel we don't have enough mounts in 40K, because mounts are a great way to express character, an original feel and vibe for the army, for the model, and I think it's really missing in 40K at the moment. If you've seen my Lord Solar kit bash, there I also kind of go into that, where I removed the horse from Lord Solar and exchanged it for a vehicle, a mount that's more suited for my death core of Krieg, Lord Solar. Now, there's one caveat here. This Anvil of Apotheosis, it's for Age of Sigmar only and narrative play only. But I'm into 40k. I love 40k. I play it mostly myself. I'm starting a little bit with Age of Sigmar. I got a lot of inspiration from this. So let's just go a little bit through the Skaven Anvil of Apotheosis and give you some examples of buffs and debuffs that you can also think about. So we're going to start with some sort of clan abilities for the Skaven. And this is kind of what you can also see in Space Marine chapters. Like an, an Ultramarine captain is different from a Space Wolf captain. And it is very, very different. And it gives army abilities, uh, regimental abilities in, in the case of Age of Sigmar. And I... Don't think this is too important for a character builder because a lot of that in 40k is already determined by your decision which chapter you're going to play as long as you're playing Space Marines. Now, if you play a different faction like Gene Stiller Cults, for example, suddenly that whole part of which regiment is he part of becomes much more important because you don't have this set framework to work with as you have with Space Marines or with Chaos Space Marines even. But let's skip over this for a second because a lot of this is determined by the army. Let's look at Origins instead. Now, I like this one because it immediately creates a little bit of a backstory for your character. It tells you the origin of the character. Where did he come from? Uh, where did he serve? What did he do? Which battles has he been part of? Which wars has been fought? You know, you're talking about a character. If you're talking about a Space Marine captain, that guy has 100 years of service, maybe 200 years, maybe even more. That guy's been around for a while. That guy has seen some shit and done some shit. And that should affect his abilities on the battlefield as well should express his character in a certain way maybe he has trophies maybe he has special abilities maybe he's extremely good against fighting hordes something like that so he has an extra couple of attacks or a sweep attack something like that or a special weapon that allows him to be quicker rather than hit harder these are really cool things that i think you can play with like the origin of your character now, flaws are also really nice. That's what I talked about before. That's the debuff. So you pick a debuff and you get points back. And these debuffs aren't very strong. Like, they're nowhere near as powerful as the buffs are, which is good. You know, you don't want to completely cripple your character just for the sake of a story. You still want to play with it. And so there's, there's really cool stuff. Like, this. I really like this one. The lead from the back from for the Skaven. And you subtract one from the number of dice rolled when making charge rolls for this unit to a minimum of one. So basically, you have a D6 charge 
that's it. And this is perfect if you're a caster or if you are like Skaven uh, Warplock in the back shooting with a sniping rifle, something like that. You don't want to charge anyway. So who cares if you lose or die on the charge? And you get four of these uh, uh, these destiny points, the points for the buffs. You get those back. Now there is some really cool stuff here. These are the uh, the, the mounts more or less so this this molder beast for example gives you companion attacks which means attacks for the mount for the beast uh, but there is a lot more options and you're not limited to the mounts that are already available for the skaven you can go for a horse-like mount like that that warlord that they have in the skaven tight box you can go for the wheel that the uh, engineers uh, ride around but now you can put your plague priest in a wheel or you can put your plate priest on a chariot. You can do really cool stuff and it's not bound to a single model. And it's literally saying on the Games Workshop website, you just need to choose a miniature mini to represent your hero on the tabletop. There are plenty of off the shelf options available, but the Anvil of Apotheosis is a rich source of inspiration for those who love to kid bash. And I love it. Thank you very much, Games Workshop. I very rarely see a recognition for kit bashing and converting by Games Workshop. And seeing this, it warms my heart. Makes me feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside. So let's talk about some inspiration that I got from this Anvil of Apotheosis and kit bashes that I'm going to start working on. First of all, mounts. I talked about it already a little bit. But mounts, I think, can bring so much character to an army. And we don't really have a lot of mounts. You know, we have bikes for space marines, but we no longer have a captain on a bike. We used to, long ago. Uh, the Orc Warboss on bike, I think it goes in and out of Legends all the time. Um, there's some space marines, uh, not a lot of mounts. The Lord Discordant is relegated to nothingness because he was too good in the last edition. It's such a shame. And so I'm going to work on chariots because we don't really have chariots in 40k we have we have santa claus running around on a sleigh and there's a couple of demon chariots because it makes sense demons are like more of an archaic faction than the living things in 40k but i would love to have more chariots and work on some space marine chariots i mean ultramarines the greco-roman aesthetic is perfect for a chariot why wouldn't they have some cool chariot or the salamanders or white scars for example I mean, white scars riding bikes some cool chariots to bring you know heavy infantry into melee as well sounds like a pretty suitable thing for for white scars another one is you know, i i really think a death guard chariot would be very very cool i imagine a massive terminator lord on the back of a chariot being driven into battle like a battle taxi because that's you know chariots are two things they're usually like a shooting platform or a battle taxi bringing heavy armored infantry to the battle they just dismount and then they go off on foot definitely something i can see a lord of contagion doing uh, i mean not by himself but it's a cool idea for a kid bash right now there's a lot more such as being the veteran of specific wars. Uh, there should be different scars on the armor, also on the marine, and the marine should adapt depending on which enemy he has been fighting for a long time. And if, if all you're fighting are orcs, you should have a higher rate of fire gun to just kill as many orcs as quickly as possible. You shouldn't be running around with a massive thunder hammer. You should have your chainsword or maybe a power sword, something quick, nimble. There's, these orcs are usually not that very well armored, so something faster that slices to flesh, through flesh is much better. And likewise, wounds inflicted on him should be kind of crude, chopping, hacking wounds that sort of sever limbs or crush the, the armor. But if he fights Eldar, then probably most of the scars on his armor should be uh, marks of getting shot. You know, Eldar shoot you to bits rather than fight you to bits. And so that should also show on the Space Marine. And maybe they have a few more force fields to stop bullets or they actually have shields or something like that that makes them more resistant to shooting attacks rather than melee attacks. Doesn't make sense to sort of have blade guard veterans with uh, really big shields and uh, go with them up against orcs because, you know, 
orcs will just crush your shield arm if they bring like big choppers. They're great against Eldar though. So this is something that you can also play with. And it's really, this is something that the, the origin story helps with, with this Anvil of Apotheosis. If you think about the origin story of your character, what has he been fighting all this time? What does he have access to? How do, would this change his weapons? How would this change the, the damage inflicted to him? You now, a, a Space Marine or well, anything else that has been fighting Death Guard for a long time, they probably have issues with their breathing. Right, they, they might have special filters on their grills or extra tight seals. If you've read quite a lot of 40k books, they talk about how the slightest puncture in the, in the seal of a Space Marine armor can kill him if they're fighting Death Guard or Nurgle Demons, something like that, because there's gas everywhere. And so it would make sense that a Space Marine who is adapted fighting the Death Guard or Nurgle Demons has a way of protecting himself against the gas that goes beyond the standard of the Space Marine armor. And it wouldn't make sense to walk around without helmet, for example. Or if it does, it would make sense to have something of a gas mask or a rebreather, something on his mouth that stops him inhaling these toxic fumes. It would also make sense that if you're playing against Death Guard, that you sort of combat their way of fighting, whether it's fighting hordes of poxwalkers or plague marines or terminators or demons. Your marines should adapt to that. And it's really a cool idea to get this into your army and, and sort of work on that origin story. And so here are some of the ideas that I'm going to work on. Stuff I've already ordered. I haven't started converting anything yet. I'm waiting for the delivery. I just had to jump on this right away when I learned more about the Anvil of Apotheosis. First of all, Skaven. I love Skaven. I have this sort of Skaven guard project going on where I made this, this battery and a commissar and some regular infantry unit. And I'm going to keep working on that little bit by little bit, but I also want to do some Skaven for Age of Sigmar. And one thing I wanted to do is to get a Plague Priest on a chariot. I just like chariots, sorry. So uh, what kind of chariot? Well, not any chariot that they actually have, but a corpse cart. I think this could become a really cool kit bash with the plague priest in the back, corpses over there, rats scrolling all around it, the, the, the guys pulling the, 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 the chariot. They won't be the zombies. I'm gonna go, go for these big, big rats from Necromunda and I'll kind of see if I can make it as much scaven as possible. They have this bell on the back already. So I think that's a pretty decent conversion right there. Now, another one, I already talked about chariots. Uh, it's a chariot for Ultramarines and it's this chariot from the Stormcast Eternals. I think the Griffhounds can work for Ultramarines as well. They might need to be made a little bit more 40k with some hoses and piping and some armor plating here and there. But I think this could be a pretty cool kit bash. And I might even make it the same profile as any of the land speeders and make it a shooting platform. Because I think the land speeders, they have a pretty big base and they are a bit high up. They're pretty, pretty high up. But I can make a chariot sort of right down a hill with also now make it a shooting platform like many chariots are and just have a couple of guys in the back with massive rocket launchers or meltas or something like that i think there's there's something over there or i could turn it into more like a hoplite in the back go for the minotaur uh, look that the minotaur uh, space marine chapter look that uh, look more greek than they look roman like the ultramarines that is more stuff coming there's a lot more stuff coming but I want to leave it here and leave some up to your imagination as well. If you think about this, if you think about origins of your characters, build your own character, what sort of mounts would he have? What sort of mount would your Space Marine captain actually ride into battle if you can make him anything he wanted? A flying mount, perhaps? Like a bird or a griffin or maybe a little hoverboard, something like that. Like the, the, the Disc of Change, it's a pretty cool idea for Change, but... Why can't you just have a hoverboard for your White Scars leader rather than a jetpack or something like that? I think it's a, it's, a, it's an interesting way. And I hope this stuff gives you inspiration as well. And, you know, let me know in the comments below what sort of stuff you're working on.